بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله إمام أبو بكر رحمة الله عليه he said in the forty fourth point in his treatise شرح السنة قال والنفاق والنفاق أن يظهر الإسلام باللسان ويخفي الكفر بالضمير. إمام أبو بكر رحمة الله عليه said hypocrisy is to display Islam with the tongue whilst inwardly hiding disbelief. And in the next ibara, or in regards to hypocrisy, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon you, hypocrisy <coughs> or nifaq is of two types. Hypocrisy ittiqadi uh, wa hypocrisy amali. That there is hypocrisy <coughs> in one's belief and then there's hypocrisy in one's actions. And this is what we usually see with with individuals <clears throat> that we witness whenever someone says someone has a characteristic of hypocrisy. These are things we witness due to their actions, due to an action that they do which fits under hypocrisy. However, that does not mean they are hypocrites. So this is imperative that we understand this. And this also <clears throat> relates to the issue of making takfir of someone as well in that you do not call someone a hypocrite that if this is something we don't really truly know what's inside of a person's heart but we only as Ahl Sunnah does is they only make judgments by their outward appearance so hypocrisy of belief uh, this is the hypocrisy uh, that takes a person out of the fold of Islam and this is the hypocrisy that Imam Baba Hari was referring to and then hypocrisy of action uh, this is what this involves a person having some characteristics of the hypocrites for example lying breaking promises uh, being dishonest when uh, a trust is given to them uh, behaving impudently uh, when disputing, meaning being very argumentative and going beyond the bounds in, in arguing and cursing and, and so forth, <clears throat> and proving treacherous with regards to contracts. This type, although it's very serious and it's very serious sins, or involves very serious sins, does not take a person out of the fold of Islam. But in time, it may lead to that. So this is very important for us to understand that the hypocrisy, amali, that when we see deeds of, hypo of hypo hypocrisy and deeds of the hypocrites that these things do not necessarily take a person out of the fold of Islam but as Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned uh, that al-ma'asi barid al-kufr that sinfulness is the way or means to disbelief so sinfulness it, it makes you on the path to disbelief so when, especially when you're doing major sins, you're treading on a dangerous path. You're going in the wrong direction. You're not on going uh, on the proper direction on the sarat. You know, you're not going on the sarat mustaqim, the straight path, the path to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Instead, you're going away from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala by distancing yourselves by doing sinfulness, by lying, by cheating. Uh, you know, and and the other uh, those major sins or those uh, types of hypocrisy. <clears throat> uh, Imam or Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi, he mentioned with regards to this and he mentioned as far as linguistically nifaq, what it means nifaq, it's taken from nafaq and nafaq, ahabatifillah it means that it's like a hole or a like a cave, you could almost say, like a hole uh, which is in the earth. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ mentioned uh, in the hadith uh, talking about how we would follow the nations that came before us, 
the Prophet said, The Prophet said, You would follow those people who came before you hand, hand span by hand span. Uh, uh, or, or foot foot span by foot span or foot by foot until you entered until they entered a hole of a lizard you would even follow them in that and so the Prophet ﷺ was referring to the jahr and this is what uh, the word nifaq or nafaq in Arabic it comes from this that like it's a herd that, that it's a hole in the ground and this is because that the uh, the relation with the the term nifaq as a uh, a Sharia term is that the person who uh, has hypocrisy that they have hidden as if they're hiding in the hole what they truly contain or what is uh, their their true person from what they are showing outwardly. This is the relationship uh, linguistically. And the Sheikh mentions, he said, وَهَذَا مَا يُسَمَّ بِنِفَاقِ الْإِتْقَارِ أَمَّا نِفَاقِ الْعَمَلِ So he says, and this is what refers to the hypocrisy in belief, and we already explained that. And he said, and as for hypocrisy, that has to do with deeds. Who Allah yukhruj min al-Islam? Bel yabqa sahibahu Musliman wa summiya nifaqan amaliyan li'anna sahibahu athar al-khilaf ma yubtan. Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi rahmatullahi alayhi he said, and as for the hypocrisy of, of deeds, he said, this does not take a person out of the fold of Islam. Rather, the person who does this, they are still Muslim. And that this nifaq, or it's called nifaq amal, uh, amali, that this is called the hypocrisy of action. And this is because the person who does this, that they illustrate outwardly what is different than what they contain uh, inwardly. And then he brings uh, some more details. He says, Emma nifaq al and as for the belief, the hypocrisy in belief, وَهُوَ نِفَاقَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا عَلَىٰ أَحْدِ نَبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَهُوَ أَنْ يَذْهَرَ الْإِسْلَامِ وَيُبْتِنَ الْقُفْرَ وَيَتَحَفِّذْ مِمَّا يُدِلَّ عَلَىٰ إِذْحَارْ عَقِيدَتِهِ لِذَلِكَ فَكَدْ أَخْبَرَ اللَّهَ بأن المنافقين في درق الأسفل من النار وبالله توفيق. The Sheikh said, رحمة الله عليه. He said uh, the hypocrisy of belief. This is the hypocrisy of the pure, the munafikun, the munafikin. You know, the pure hypocrites. Those who were around during the time of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. So during the time of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام, there were hypocrites in his midst. And those people and the hypocrite they outwardly illustrate Islam but they conceal disbelief in their hearts and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from these evil traits and may Allah bless us with ikhlas with the bad Allah sunnah ameen ya rabbil alameen until we die until we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem ya ayu ladina amanu يا 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 الله ولا تموتن إلا وأنت مسلمون. الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتاب الكريم يا يا الذين آمنوا أو يهو بليف اتقوا الله fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى and do not die except in a state of belief. and we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى by all of His divine names and attributes to bless us to die in a state of iman, a state of belief, because it is so serious and for those of us who live in the West, more so, or have lived in the West, or what have you, or from the West, we've witnessed many people come and go into the religion. I've known many people who I traveled with, who we fought side by side, 
we uh, did all kind of activities together, and they're no longer Muslim. They left Islam. They left Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left them. So because they left the light of Islam, we don't say necessarily that they were hypocrites, because in fact they could have been sincere at the time. So we don't know their state. And this is very important for us to know and understand when it comes to hypocrisy, that if, you know, it's a very dangerous and serious thing when you call someone a hypocrite. And, and of course it has uh, great implications. However, a person, their iman fluctuates and a person can leave Islam as well as a person enters Islam. As many of us became Muslim, we entered Islam, we can also leave Islam. According, uh, if you uh, have di uh, disbelief, you no longer believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, or the Malaika or the angels or the other prophets. If you say you don't believe in Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, you're not a Muslim. If you don't love Jesus, you're not a Muslim. If you don't believe in Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, you're, you're not a Muslim. Or you don't believe in Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, you're not a Muslim. This is not, that's not from Islam. That person has no Islam. So this is why it's imperative to always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ikhlas with the Baptist to be firmly grounded on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and be sincere to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and may Allah bless us with ikhlas with the bat. Then Imam Baba Hari Rahmatullah said, Ahabitu Fillah, Wa'alam bi anna dunya dar al-Iman wal-Islam wal Ummatu Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fiha mu'minun muslimun fi ahkamihim wa mawarithihim wa dhaba'ihim wa salat alayhim ولا نشهد لأحد بحقيقة الإيمان حتى يأتي بجميع شرائع الإسلام فإن قصر في شيء من ذلك كان ناقص الإيمان حتى يتوب وعلم أن الإيمان هو إلى الله تعالى تام الإيمان تام الإيمان أو ناقص الإيمان إلا ما أظهر لك من ضيع شرائع الإسلام uh, Imam Baba Hari Rahmatullah said in the next uh, ibarah or the next uh, sentence, he said, the world is the place of Iman. Or know that the world is the place of Islam, uh, of Iman and Islam. Uh, and this is relevant because here the Imam is showing us that as many of the Salaf used to say, a dunya, a dunya darul, uh, a dunya darul amal, wal akhira darul jaza. That this life is the time and place. It's the worldly life of deeds. Because once you you die, your deeds are stopped. As the Prophet sallallahu said, except three. Qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi Sahih Muslim. إذا انقطع العمل إذا إذا مات المرء انقطع عمله إلا من ثلاث الصدقة جارية العلم ينتفع به وولد صالح يدعو له رواه مسلم. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said that when a person dies, their deeds cease except three. So that means that's what you leave. You leave whatever you were last upon and what you did in this life except three continuous charity maybe you built a masjid maybe you gave charity and it uh, you know contributed you know it was a continuous charity it wasn't just one time you gave somebody food but you gave you built something you built a charity and that charity continues on after your life doing good works or you made a building for waqf you know a, 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 a trust or a, a building which is there for people, uh, students of knowledge, for example, to live in with no free of charge, or homeless women, or like a shelter or something. This is a continuous charity because after you die, people are still bidding, benefiting from that, and you're still getting reward, and it's piling up on your scale of good deeds. And may Allah bless us with that. And the and the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the second thing, and he said. Uh, he said knowledge that the people benefit from. So if you leave behind beneficial knowledge, 
علم النافع you leave behind beneficial knowledge for example you wrote books and people uh, benefit from those books and they teach from those books then this is beneficial knowledge or you left behind students you were able to raise up students of knowledge then you'll receive a uh, reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after you've died that these uh, the good deeds that they do and the people they teach it's going to be like a chain going back to you and you'll receive reward and your sheikh will receive reward and his sheikh or her sheikh will receive reward and so this uh, then the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned the third thing that also uh, remains after you die and he said a walad in salihan yad'uluhu the Prophet Sallallahu said uh, a righteous child that supplicates for you and this is what we want as well ahabitullah that if Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored you with children then you want them to of course be righteous children you want to do the best you can to raise them may Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many shortcomings ameen ya rabbil alameen but you want to make sure your children are raised properly, that they have the Islamic tarbiyah, that they're learning Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you'll be rewarded for that. That they're a righteous child, and then when you die, they supplicate for you. This is imperative, because we don't know when we're going to die. So we want to die on istiqamah, we want to die, this is advice to myself and to you, to make tawbah, come back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and die in righteousness, because we don't know. In fact, today at my work, uh, we were just uh, talking, I had to show a video to my students re related to one of, the, one of their colleagues who wasn't at our facility, was at another facility who just graduated and received a job uh, as a full-time employee. Only two weeks after that, he was going to visit his parents and he was driving on the highway and what they said is that he was checking his gifts in the back seat. Now with that we don't know. That's a bit difficult to affirm, but, uh, and then he ran into a curved road and his car rolled and it was all smashed up and so they made a very powerful video and they made it all, uh, made it up and, uh, and then the father spoke and his father was warning people to drive safely and so forth and not take life for granted, but he lost his son. His son was only 20 years old. His son had dreams, of course, of marriage. His son had dreams maybe of children. His son had dreams of, of uh, a house and all those things in the dunya that we crave. But it wasn't written for him to achieve those things. His lifespan was written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was to end at 20. So that could be for any of us or our children. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and bless us all uh, to live righteous, prosperous lives. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. Ahabitifillah. Uh, in regards to this ibarah, Imam Ahmed, uh, Imam Ahmed al-Najmi, rahmatullah he said, uh, with regards to the end of dunya, darul iman wal islam, that the dunya, this worldly life, is the place of iman, of belief in Islam. He said, hadafihi nadar, that there's some, uh, that this requires giving a bit more attention to this, or a bit more, uh, you know that there's that this is not in absolutely correct and then he clarifies what he means by this he said because not the whole worldly life is not a place of of islam and iman he said and then he's talking about the ahkam uh regarding uh societies he says walakin dar al-iman wal islam hi dar alati tukun asalta fiha li ahl al-iman wal islam uh, so this is a very important, this is the distinguishment that what, uh, how uh, Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi, how he uh, explained this statement by Imam Baba Hari in that, that this worldly, this life, uh, this uh, dunya is a place of Islam and Iman. So it was different than the way that I mentioned. And this is, uh, according to the, you know, this is the more appropriate uh, tafsir. And that he is saying that, uh, that this is not an absolute because the world is not, it, it, the world is divided into Darul Islam or Darul Kufr. That 
societies are, there are believing societies and disbelieving societies, which is well known to us. And, and then he goes on to give us some of the conditions or some of the details regarding believing societies. He said, وَلَكِنْ دَارُ الْإِمَانِ وَالْإِسْلَامِ هِيَ دَارُ أَلَتِي تَكُونُ الصَّوْتَ فِيهَا لِأَهْلِ الْإِمَانِ وَالْإِسْلَامِ That the believing society is a society where it is ruled by uh, uh, the people of Iman, meaning uh, Muslims, uh, and, and Islam, you know, the people of Iman and faith and Islam. That That is what uh, one of the criterion for a society to be called a Muslim society. And also that the prayer is established in the society, that it's, uh, the prayer is open, is, it's established in the society. And that the society rules by the uh, Sharia, the Islamic law. And that also that this society does not openly uh, espouse disbelief in Allah and uh, shirk or polytheism. So those are some of the criterion. And then he, mentioning the, the opposite of that, and he said, and if they advertise disbelief and shirk, then this is not the Dar al Islam. This is not a, a place of Islam, a, 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 a Muslim country or Islamic country. Until the asl, uh, you know, is based on Tawheed and what uh, was, uh, you know, those, those principles we just mentioned that make up the, the, the ballad of Islam. And then he mentioned that even if a place, uh, that its foundation was uh, Dar al Islam, that it was an Islamic country, but he's making the point here is that they change that it can change. Uh, and he mentions Andalus, which is now modern day Spain, that you know when the Muslims uh, were in control then, then that was uh, a Muslim country. But now, of course, it is not a Muslim country. It's a disbelieving country, a, con a, a Christian country, or whatever Spain uh, espouses as their, their main religion, or po perhaps some countries they don't espouse a, a faith, in fact, or and they say everyone's free to worship who or whatever they, they worship, but the main uh, rulership it maybe does not adhere to a particular uh, uh, religious orientation. So the point being here, Habitatullah, is that Darul Islam can change to Darul Kufr and Darul, Darul Kufr can change to Darul Islam. That these things they change and it just depends how, how the situation and events change. Does Islam become dominant and uh, the Islamic ruling and the prayer and things like this, open signs of Islam be established in the land to, the, to therefore change it to become uh, a Muslim land. And then he explains uh, the statement where Imam Baba Hari said, Wa Emma Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fiha mu'minun, wa ummatu Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fiha mu'minun, muslimun fi ahkamihim. And we didn't translate that, so it's important that we translate that whole ibadah. So uh, amongst the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi there are believers and Muslims uh, with regards to rulings, inheritance, slaughtering animals, and funeral prayer. So all these rulings pertinent to uh, the Muslims and the believers. That this, these are the characteristics uh, uh, of of believers and some of the rulings pertinent to them, like inheriting from one another, uh, that the Muslims, they eat the halal, slaughtered food, and the funeral prayer is also a sign. So Imam Baba Hari mentioned those things. And then a very important point <coughs> that uh, Imam, uh, Imam Ahmed Rahmatullahi he mentions Imam ah, uh, Ahmed al-Najmi uh, he mentions uh, the importance that those are the signs of the believers you know that they establish the prayer uh, that the, of course they utter the shahada they pay the zakat they fast the, the month of Ramadan uh, and that they inherit from one another and they slaughter their animals uh, in order before uh, partaking in them. 
And if one of the Muslims dies, of course, then we pray over them the funeral, the Islamic funeral prayer. These are the signs of Islam. And they are from the usul and the furur of Islam, that they are from the, the foundations of Islam and the various branches. They branch off. These are all part of the rulings, uh, from the foundational rulings to the rulings that branch off to those side rulings, if you want to call it. And he mentions that even uh, if someone does, of course, uh, they do something muharram, they sin, they do the major sins, whatever, they drink alcohol, they commit adultery, they, uh, you know, are homosexual, they do whatever, that, that does not negate their Islam, that doesn't, although it goes against Iman, it, 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 um, it lowers a person's Iman, and this is what Iman is to Ahlu Sunnah, as we already mentioned at the beginning of the treaties, that Iman fluctuates, we believe that Muslims, are, our faith fluctuates, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low, and that we all sin, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that all the children of Adam, they make mistakes or they sin, and the best of those sinners is those who repent. And so we believe that we all sin, and that our Iman sometimes can be very high, and sometimes our Iman is very low, and that when a person does sin, it doesn't take them out of the fold of Islam, but rather, it uh, lowers their iman, their faith. Their faith is lower. So when a person drinks alcohol, this is he is exhibiting, he or she is exhibiting low iman, weak faith. But they are still a Muslim. If they kill someone, they are exhibiting weak faith, but they're still a Muslim. As long as they don't believe their sinfulness is lawful, and their sinfulness also has to meet the criterion. Generally, the, the ulama say, you know, that it's something that it is something which out of necessity that, the, the, that everyone should know in Islam. For example, even every, practically every non-Muslim that knows anything about Islam, they know that a Muslim should not drink alcohol. They know this. And they know Muslims should not eat pork. Even the people who hate Islam and may speak ill of Muslims and ill of Islam, and they don't... Uh, uh, know anything about the belief of the Muslims, but they know Muslims are not supposed to eat pork. And you'll see them cursing Islam on the YouTube and other channels and other uh, programs and other forums, and they'll mention foul things about Muslims with regards to pork and stuff. Why? Because they even know, even though they don't believe in Islam, they know that Muslims are not supposed to eat pork. So then, therefore, if a Muslim were to, and this is a general hukum, this is what we call takfir, uh, a mutlaq. If a Muslim were to make that lawful, then they would be dis a disbeliever. For example, someone who says, no, pork is lawful for me. Then this person has uttered a statement of disbelief because they've made the haram halal. And vice versa, to make the halal haram. It's very serious, very dangerous. But making that which is uh, unlawful, lawful is uh, a very serious, it's disbelief, istihlal. And this, so the point being of mention in the Sahaba Tifillah is that when a person commits sin in Islam, even if it's one of the major sins, that it doesn't take them out of the fold of Islam necessarily, although there are those things which take you out of the fold of Islam, of course. But there's a, a lot of other conditions with that. Um, and those things which are no ma'lum min adin bi as well. Um, so, for for example, something that would take you out of the fold of Islam, of course, worshiping the dead, supplicating to the dead. This takes you out of the fold of Islam, and that's well known. It should be well known. Ma'lum min adin bi So the person who does this has, is, has disbelieved. But do we make that hukum on everyone who's done this? That we go to the ulama, we go to the scholars and the qudat for this, for those rulings. So those are just some of the benefits, hopefully, of this, uh, this ibarah that Imam Baba Hari said, and this was the, um, the 46th point in his treaties, and relevant to that, we'll mention the 47th point very briefly, uh, that
the uh, the believer. However, Imam Abu Hanifa said, however, we do not bear witness that any 